Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as was the vast majority of crypto and finance. With that being said, let's just dive in and let's start off with this. So do you guys remember this tweet back in like roughly the middle of June that I put out? I was talking about the World Economic Forum. This is a global private organization um, they're pretty transparent on their membership. They're not really a major private entity, but they have um, leached their way into every aspect of life through really kind of connecting with global leaders and connecting with these global companies that also control a large portion of um, you know the S&P 500 and companies around you. I mean, it's just like BlackRock, right? Like they are partnered with BlackRock. They have connections with BlackRock. So as we look at the World Economic Forum, this is an elite organization. And they predicted that $867 trillion, not my wards, their wards, um, could be disrupted by tokenization through blockchain technology. Now, during this time, I, I, I literally said, like, the path forward is so damn clear to me that crypto is the future because the elites are telling you this. If you're not paying attention to this, then you are missing the overall target. I said, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. The change that will come from blockchain and DLT over the next decade will reshape our lives, literally. Uh, this will be bigger than any technology revolution we have seen. I've been hyper-focused on projects that are disrupting key areas that are very valuable slash ripe for disruption. Um, XRP and many other tokens themselves, which I do mention here, um, are here to upgrade significant pieces of the global puzzle. Many people are asleep at one of the most crucial times in our society. Those that are here researching, studying, and focused on what is happening and still unaffected by the shakeouts, you will win. Great things take time. The plan is in place and the digital future is inevitable. You are either prepared or you will be left behind. You decide. And yes, listen, there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of sinister things behind the World Economic Forum. In fact, we've talked a little bit about how most people will be wiped out by the World Economic Forum and their overall agenda. Here's the article, by the way, that I was quoting. Um, but as we look at the World Economic Forum, I think that they are pretty, pretty focused on Web3 and blockchain. Um, if we go over here to January 4th of this year, we do see going mainstream for Web3 developments to watch in 2023. This was from Davos 2023. For those that don't know about Davos 2023, uh, you should have been really kind of heavily focused on this because a lot of your favorite tokens and the companies behind them were there. Um, and they were really kind of looking at what's happening around crypto. They were also pushing their own agenda. Uh, we've seen trade finance being talked about a little bit and how we could streamline trade finance. There was a few large things discussed there. Um, they even did talk about CBDCs. They talked about cross-border payments. They talked about so much. There was over 32 plus topics discussed here. So as we really kind of look at a lot of these agendas, you need to make sure that you are paying attention to the agendas at hand. A lot of that could be discussed in these events like Davos 2023. But within this, the key things to look at is the global Web3 market was worth an estimated 3.2 billion in 2021 and is projected to continue growing. Uh, there is likely to be a changing policy landscape for Web3 innovators and an increased use of decentralized social media. There will be more tokenization of assets, increasingly mainstream use of blockchain technology. And uh, over here, January 5th, why we still need cryptocurrency for an internet of value. Who's talking about the internet of value? Oh yeah, that's right, Ripple. Ripple was the original ones really kind of addressing this. And by the way, yes, Ripple is a World Economic Forum partner. If you guys didn't know. And uh, down here, we do see cryptocurrency and blockchain are revolutionizing the exchange of value as the internet did for the exchange of information. However, the need for industry reform is clear. Cryptocurrency's use cases vary worldwide with more uses possible. With emerging Web3 technologies, the future of crypto markets can't be discussed without addressing the collapse of the crypto exchange FTX, whose failure was defined by broader organizational and economic considerations. Hmm, very interesting. And then over here, shout out to Utility Theory and uh, XX. I don't even want to say the rest of his name because it's so hard to really kind of pronounce the whole thing without sounding stupid. But if you guys want to go check him out, go uh, check him out over on Twitter. Um, also check out Utility Theory if you guys haven't already. Incredible individual in the space. Um, had the opportunity to actually meet with him and talk to him uh, via Discord. So great individual, definitely check him out. And we do see how interconnected in the World Economic Forum. Here is the research mind map between him and also XX and I showcasing uh, some of their connections. 
They are deeply routed across the world, and we think it's important for citizens to see the data of how they are established in their technology governance among the globe. We also do see down here for an added bonus, the mind map below is a larger overview of global standard setting bodies in the global financial industry to show you how large the financial industry is. Uh, these are the entities that are creating the rules and regulation to our money system and soon the crypto ecosystem. And yes, this is why we focus on the World Economic Forum. Check this out. So let me zoom in real quick uh, to 175. And here we have it, right? So first and foremost, at the center point, we have the World Economic Forum, Research Connections Project by Citizen of the Future and XX. The World Economic Forum is at the, the focus point here. And um, you also have the World Economic Forum Global Future Councils. You also have the platforms over here. You have the communities. Down here, you have New Generation Industry Leader Solutions Accelerator. You also have the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals Agenda 2030, which, by the way, they are trying to accelerate to 2025. And then, of course, you have the centers. Now, throughout history of the World Economic Forum, we know that they have planted their seeds everywhere within the global system. They have connections to everyone. They are the ones that are moving the needle in every aspect possible. Look at everything that they are focused on. We're talking about, you know, value chains, uh, governance, AI and humanity, virtual reality. I mean, it's insane how connected the World Economic Forum is to everything. This is the elite organization that is moving everything along. They are also a big name behind the um, fourth industrial revolution, which we will get to here in a second as well. But here you guys have the platforms. This is where we really kind of look heavily into uh, crypto and the digital economy as well, because we do see shaping the future of digital economy and the new value creation. Um, they also talk about shaping the future of financial and monetary systems. I mean, you name it, anything that you can think about, <laughs> they're tied to. And here's the second slide. So you have the clearinghouses and the payment infrastructures, literally every single major clearinghouse and payment infrastructure. You have additional financial regulatory authorities. Again, they are connected to the SEC, the FCA, um, and so many other ones as well. And then down here, you have the central banks, Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Canada, and the list goes on. And then of course, here are the standard setting bodies. Oh wow, look at that, the G7, the G20, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, even the World Bank, the World Economic Forum themselves, the IMF, the BIS. Then you have the institutional banks as well. And then you also have the BRICS, the New Development Bank, the Cross-Border Interbank Payment System, Asia Infrastructure Bank. Like all of this is connected. Listen, if you are sitting there and you're saying, oh, wow, look at the BRICS are challenging the U.S. The U.S. is falling behind. This is that. No, 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 no. See, this is what most people are overlooking. Like, this is all controlled. This is all a controlled environment. What we are witnessing is Hollywood on a global stage, right? Like, they are creating the show that everyone is so involved in. Everyone wants to see what's next. And they're turning on their Fox News, their CNN, their, you know, whatever, right? Even if you are red or blue, I don't care, right? All of it is one big show for everyone to be engaged and you know, go crazy about it, divide, 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 right? Like they want to divide us by political beliefs. They want to, you know, divide us every way possible. And it's all elite agenda. It's all elite agenda to push their elite agenda. Like it's wild. Like I've said, all of this is heavily focused on crypto as well. We know that the World Economic Forum has plans around crypto. In fact, like I've said, going back to this one and you look at the standard setting bodies, like you have the G20 here, you have um, the IMF, the BIS. Um, you even have the FSB here, right? Like the Financial Stability Board. And the reason why we mention that is because look at this, right? Like this is the pathway to crypto asset regulation, a global approach. By the way, this is a PDF file. You guys can go and download if you want. Um, but what they are looking at is coordinating regulatory frameworks across jurisdictions is a complex and formidable task. So they need a global coordination. It's so obvious, right? Like that's what they're saying here. This is May of 2023. Mind you, we already know that the IMF with the FSB and the BIS, all instructed by the G20, is already working on global crypto frameworks. Here's September 7th. This was the last major update. This is with the IMF, like I've said, and the FSB and the BIS and the G20. We scroll down to the executive summary. Here you guys have it. So the IMF and the Financial Stability Board are or have advanced policy and regulatory recommendations to identify and respond to macroeconomic and financial stability risk associated with crypto assets. They do talk a little bit more about this um, in depth. Um, and then here we have at the request of the Indian G20 presidency, the IMF and the FSB have developed this paper to synthesize the IMFs and the FSBs alongside SSBs, policy recommendations and standards. 
And again, here's where they mention DeFi. They also talk about crypto asset activities and markets. And we also have crypto assets have implications for macroeconomic and financial stability that are mutually interactive and reinforcing. Um, and then they also do talk a little bit how it could threaten global financial stability. I love when they also bring that up. They always bring it up. Here we have a comprehensive policy and regulatory response for crypto assets is necessary to address the risk for or of crypto assets to macroeconomic and financial stability. Um, and then comprehensive regulatory and supervisory oversight of crypto assets should be a baseline to address macroeconomic and financial stability risk. The FSB alongside SSBs have developed a global framework of recommendations and standards, which, by the way, Ripple was uh, able to comment on this. I bring that up every single time because I do think that it's crucial to mention. Um, it also kind of shows how uh, deep Ripple is connected to some of these elite organizations and standard setting bodies. Um, down here, we do see to address risk to financial integrity and mitigate criminal and terrorist misuse of the crypto asset sector. Jurisdictions should implement the Financial Action Task Force anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing standards that apply to virtual assets and virtual asset service providers. Um, some jurisdictions, in particular emerging markets and developing economies, may want to take additional targeted measures uh, that go beyond the global regulatory baseline to address specific risk. And then here we have the IMF and the FSB together with uh, other international organizations and SSBs have set out a roadmap to ensure flexible, effective, and coordinated implement implementation of the comprehensive policy response for of course, crypto assets. And this is all to build institutional capacity beyond the G20 jurisdictions, enhance global coordination, cooperation, and information sharing, and address data gaps necessary to understand the rapidly changing crypto asset ecosystem. Um, and again, like they are all preparing. Like this is why I say, like, you know, if you're getting shaken out now, if you're getting frustrated now, if you're getting impatient now, it is definitely not the time. It's definitely not the time because this is all from the elites. Like these are elite organizations, standard setting bodies. These are the, the ones in control of everything. Um, and they're literally telling you what's coming, right? Like they're telling you what to prepare for. And here we have from the World Economic Forum as well, the agenda articles. This is blockchain, right? This is filtered by blockchain. There's over 265 articles. Um, and within this, just a few, right? Like we're starting off March 30th, 2023. That was the last major update. Here's where. The World Economic Forum's Digital ID Initiative is catalyzing an international framework to realize financial health and uh, social impact. <laughs> this is them telling you like, hey, digital ID is coming. And here we have how blockchain driven humanitarian humanitarianism can help people. And here we have is blockchain really secure? Here are four pressing cyber threats you must consider. And they just continue on with a lot of these uh, big, big things in terms of articles talking about mainstream adoption of Web3. Uh, why DLT needs to scale back its ambition. Um, they're even talking about navigating global disruption, introducing the global value chain bar uh, barometer. Like when you look through here, like some of this is like whatever, but a lot of this is really kind of just heavily focused on how blockchain and DLT and Web3 is becoming a reality. Um, it's going to take some time for this to be massively globally adopted, but I do think that there's going to be accelerators within there. Um, a lot of people have this outlook of like roughly 10, 15, 20 years until we see mass adoption. But I think that it could happen a lot faster. I think that a lot of the um, major events are accelerating this, like for an example, BRICS. And all of this is one big show. Um, and also the fourth industrial revolution, right? Like this is the center for the fourth industrial, industrial revolution. This is from the World Economic Forum as well. And here you had 18 global centers, you had 60 plus initiatives, you had 300 plus policy and governance experts, you had 450 plus innovators and technology pioneers as well. And here you guys have um, how we drive impact. Again, they're really just kind of talking about some of the key areas on how they can uh, deliver this, this major vision around uh, the fourth industrial revolution, which we will get to here in a second. And here we have the top 10 emerging technologies of 2023. Again, one of those is DLT and blockchain. Um, and down here, we have the latest news behind this. And again, here we have the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, Malaysia, to accelerate green transition, digital transformation. It's all part of the elite agenda. And um, when we go over to the next part here, this is their strategic outlook of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. This is where I say everything around us is going to be disrupted by the Fourth Industrial Revolution. And you can see everything on this list and then look at it. You have blockchain technology up here. When you look at the frontier uh, technologies, there's a few, right? The digital economy, virtual and augmented reality. You have the future of computing, science, artificial intelligence, 
biotechnology, 3D printing, precision uh, medicine, blockchain, quantum computing, manufacturing, and advanced materials. When you look at blockchain, definitely interesting because this kind of gives you an idea on everything that's being disrupted by this technology, and they've even outlined a full-on mind map of this. You could see the financial monetary system, for example. If you click here, you could see everything around this. You could see, you know, financing the transition to a net zero future. Again, elite agenda. Everything around this you can go in depth on. And when you go back, right, like when we go back to um, just the topics behind this, so sorry, let me go back to this one. So when we go back to the blockchain space, here we have them breaking it down. Blockchain can enable greater trust and transparency through decentralization, cryptography, and the creation of new incentives. Best known as the digital underpinning of cryptocurrencies, it has evolved into a foundational technology with promise in many areas. While the financial sector is investigating it as a means to replace expensive and inefficient payment systems, it could also reshape supply chains, particularly in combination with the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence while boosting the practical day-to-day -day use of smart contracts and digital identities. However, many questions remain about the best use of the technology, its environmental impact, and its governance. And when we look at this, it's really confirming the fact that they are addressing the overall potential of this technology. They are planning around it. They are running trials. We already know this with the BIS and some of the other organizations, like even the IMF. Um, we know that one of the biggest things is like, for example, tokenization. Tokenization obviously is the big one to focus on because we already know that the World Economic Forum has great ambitions uh, for this market with $867 trillion being talked about, um, being the big disruption uh, point. This was back in 2021, mind you. So, you know, I do think that we need to pay attention to what these organizations are saying. Most people are overlooking this. And even when you look at the centers for the fourth industrial revolution, you can see the history behind this. Back in 2016 is when we seen the book published, The Fourth Industrial Revolution. This is from Klaus Schwab. Then 2017 establishes the C4IR, um, Center for uh, the Industrial Revolution. In San Francisco, to better understand and shape technological change, Japan and India are the first two centers to join. 2023, 18 centers are actively engaged with the forum and committed to improve technology governance and their uh, sectoral transformation. And here you guys have some of the areas, AI and machine learning, autonomous systems, bioeconomy, cli climate and agriculture technology. I mean, this is truly what is being talked about, discussed and planned. And when we look at the World Economic Forum, we know that this is an elite organization that has been embedded in our system for years. I mean, we're talking decades now. We're going back to like the 1970s. And here you guys have their network, right? They have networks around the whole world. And you can see the C4IR. These are the centers around the fourth industrial revolution. And um, they are in big areas around the world. They have already connected um, and really kind of embedded themselves in a global scale to address this um, fourth industrial revolution agenda and really kind of streamline it and accelerate it. And that's what we are really kind of seeing now uh, with the downfall of our traditional system, because what this is, when we look at the traditional system, this is them trying to destroy it, right? A lot of people think that, oh, it's not by plan. You know, the US has fallen greatly behind, de-dollarization, this, that, whatever. I want you guys to all understand that this is orchestrated. Like this is all self-inflicted damage to the traditional system to usher in this new system. This is what they need to happen. They need to see things fail in order to have this new system rise from the ashes. And that's what I say. Like they're trying to wipe out the retail sector and they've already succeeded a lot in that area. I mean, think about it, right? Like go look at how expensive life has become. It's ridiculous. And you know, for a lot of people, they are struggling right now. And the struggle is only going to get worse and worse and worse because this is what they have planned. They want to wipe out the, the traditional system at any, at, again, any cost possible. Like they don't care about the cost. They want to usher in this new system and it's going to be heavily underpinned by blockchain DLT. Um, and this is what we've been really kind of addressing. This is what we've been focused on. And this is why I say like you need to pay attention to what they are talking about at these big events, like for example, the World Economic Forum, uh, Davos 2023, like that was a big one. 2024 is coming up. They're going to be talking about blockchain and DLT, I'm sure, uh, there as well, because we've already started to see BlackRock and the big institutions coming out of the woodwork. And like I've said, shout out to Utility Theory. He's been absolutely killing it on a lot of this research. 
a lot of people don't understand how embedded the World Economic Forum is into the global system. A lot of people think like, oh, you know, we need to stop the World Economic Forum. In order to stop the World Economic Forum, you need to stop every single major elite organization. You have to stop all the, the governors and the governments out there. Like, they are already embedded. They already have connections to all of the global leaders. It's wild. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Peace out.